Good morning everyone and welcome to this edition of Art with Miss Myra. I hope that you are all having a really good day today. Um, it is actually raining today and I'm so thankful because um, it is a little bit dry out and so we're very thankful for the rain um, this morning and stuff. So. Um, hopefully it'll clear off a little bit later um, this morning or this 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 afternoon and we can get out and enjoy some uh, nice warmer weather so um, first thing uh, um, today is I want to um, do a quick shout out to um, all of the wonderful ladies down at Babs uh, coffee shop in Jamestown North Dakota uh, Barb um, is a longtime friend of mine and she is doing just a phenomenal um, um, event at her uh, location um, in Jamestown. Um, they are selling these t-shirts. Um, I'll um, just show you. It is uh, these t-shirts and of course it has all of the hearts with the uh, you know um, a world of hearts to symbolize that um, and she is selling these t-shirts um, at um, it, and maybe she's doing this in Fargo too. I'm not quite sure and stuff, but I know they're doing it here in Jamestown. Um, she's selling these T-shirts for $25, and um, then she is donating $10 of the purchase of those T-shirts um, to businesses that are not open. Um, you know, salons that are not open. Um, you know, um, different um, businesses that are not open. So if you are in the Jamestown area, um, please stop down at Babs um, and get something good to drink and then pick up one of these t-shirts and stuff. Um, I think that's, that's a great thing that she's doing. So, okay. So today our project is going to be, and I'm really excited about this, you guys. Um, we are going to be doing a how-to day. So I'm going to teach you how to make some basic supplies, some basic art supplies that we are going to use um, in our, our lessons and stuff. These are things that um, are just handy to have and they are all very simply made just with a couple of things that we all have in our homes, okay? So the first thing that we're going to learn to make is we're going to learn how to make Mod Podge. Um, and you know, Mod Podge is something that I talk about a lot, we utilize a lot of um, in projects and for this um, project you're going to need white school glue, water, a mason jar, or a spaghetti, um, an old spaghetti jar with a lid, and water. That's all you're going to need for that, okay? So to make alcohol, um, the next thing that we're going to learn how to make is we're going to learn how to make alcohol inks. Um, and for that project, you're going to need permanent markers, rubbing alcohol, small glass jars, scissors, and needle nose pliers, okay? And then next, and this is the one that I'm really super, super, super excited about. Um, this, we are going to learn how to make our own watercolor palette, a watercolor paint palette. Um, and this was inspired, I was contacted by a mom um, a couple of weeks ago who I had, um, project that I had done here on Art with Miss Myra and I um, told the kids that they needed to have a watercolor palette and unfortunately they didn't have a watercolor palette at home um, and so I went on the lookout for a recipe because I thought you know we can make all these things at home and stuff and, and you know can we make this watercolor palette at home yep we can I found a recipe I tried it out it works um, very well actually and stuff so we're going to learn how to make our own watercolor palette today okay and so for this project you're going to need baking soda white vinegar light corn syrup and if you have dark corn syrup you can use that too okay um, you're going to need cornstarch food coloring a mini muffin tin or a um, ice cube tray they work perfect and I'm gonna the um, the thing that I'm going to show you today and stuff, the demonstration that I'm going to show you today is we're going to be making it in an ice cube tray, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to move um, my phone down a little bit so you guys can see my workstation and we'll get started with the first project. The first project is, of course, we're going to be making our Mod Podge. So for this project, like I said, we're going to need white school glue, our empty um, jar with lid, water, um, and that's all we need for this. Okay, so I have um, eight ounces of white school glue, and so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this in my jar, and oops, this has a, I hate this one that has a, oh. 
and now you get to watch me struggling to take this out because I don't really have long nail nails okay so there we go we're gonna just squirt this in our jar and this is actually a I don't know it's a salsa jar or something and just one that I had in the house so I figured this was good to use for this And this is a full eight ounce bottle. Um, if you have the little four ounce bottles, you know, of course you'll just need two of them. Okay, so I've squirted out quite a bit of this. In order to get out the rest of it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just pour my four ounces of water very carefully so I'm not gonna spill. And this is a way of just utilizing all of the glue in the container here. I'm just going to shake that up a little bit. And then go ahead and dump that in. So the things that we use Mod Podge for is when we are doing certain painting projects, if we're wanting to seal, um, put a seal on, on the um, painting project when we're done, and all you do, guys, is just shake this up afterwards, and then you can just store it in your, um, you know, in your cupboard and stuff, in your art supply cupboard, okay? So that is it for step number one. And like I said, Mod Podge is used for sealing different painting projects. Um, and there's just a variety of different, when we did our salt dough ornaments, you know, we sealed our um, ornaments after we were all done painting them. Um, and, you know, we sealed them with Mod Podge. So Mod Podge is just a very handy thing to have on hand. Um, it has a lot of uh, different uses. And so I hope that you guys all make this, okay? So the next one that we're going to be making, and you'll have to bear with me for just a second here because I have a number of supplies that I'm going to, um, you know, get out and, and bring over. So this is making um, alcohol inks, okay? And you guys um, all saw me probably last week, but if you didn't, that's okay. Um, I did a project using alcohol inks. And next week, we're going to have a project using alcohol inks. So if you have not made alcohol inks, I would really encourage you guys to, to make a set. Um, you know, this is something that is, um, you know, actually pretty expensive when you buy it, um, you know, uh, ready-made set in the store. I've, I've paid, you know, upwards of $50 for a set of alcohol inks. And, you know, you just you don't need to and stuff you can you can make your own utilize your own um, and you just need just a few very 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 basic supplies um, you know to do that and stuff so I'm going to show you today how to do that and you can see I've made I've started making this set and I've got some of them made but I still have some of the clear um, jars that just have my alcohol in them and but I'm going to show you guys walk you guys through how to make them so what I did is I went and got um, a set of, of uh, permanent markers from the store and I paid two dollars and 47 cents per set and I got two sets so I have two of the same color markers for each of my little jars okay and so now all I'm going to do hopefully is open this and I'm going to show you guys how to take the markers apart and go ahead and get started. So all I've done is I filled this with just regular rubbing alcohol. So hopefully we all have um, some regular rubbing alcohol in our medicine cabinet. Ask your moms or grandmas if they have any of that. And if you can have some of it, okay, because I know that that is in very short supply right now. Um, I um, actually I was running low of alcohol and I tried to buy some. Um, and I, you can't buy this <laughs> because everyone is using it um, to make hand sanitizer. So um, if you, um, you know, hopefully you all have some or um, 
if you don't and stuff, maybe just um, look around and, and or, or try to order some online or something and stuff. But anyway, so this is what we do here with this style of marker. Um, and I love, actually love this style of marker because it's very easy to take apart. We just take our needle nose pliers and we're just going to, oops, we're just going to, and of course I got a really tough one. We're just going to take off the end cap, okay? And then I'm just going to set that aside because I don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to reach in here. I don't have to break this plastic at all. I, I don't have to do anything with it. And I don't want to because if you do, it gets kind of messy. You just reach in here, put your marker aside. You reach in here, you get the felt, um, ink felt out. And then I just go ahead and cut this because for my little baby food jars, I need to have it cut, you know, and stuff because it, I want it to fit in. All right. And you can see it's already started. It's already started. And this is going to set, I want this to set, um, and, um, you know, uh, all of the alcohol to soak out that ink over a 24 hour period of time before I use them. Okay. And so you, um, you know, this is something that if you want to do a project with alcohol ink, you definitely have to do this ahead of time. Um, because like I said, it takes 24 hours for it to, um, you know, kind of mature and, uh, get ready to go for use. And sometimes they're a little bit tricky to cut. But that's okay, that one's cut open, so I'm just gonna kinda stuff it in. Make sure it goes all the way in. Okay, all right. And now all I'm going to do, this was purple, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to shake this up a little bit and then I'm going to set this on my windowsill and let this, um, you know, age and, and um, kind of uh, the alcohol soaks out all the ink uh, that's in that ink, um, you know, uh, in the ink pad of the in between the marker and then we're going to be good to go. And when I do this, um, guys, I... What I do is I go ahead and I have, I'm, I, I use a lot of essential oils. And so I have found that essential oil bottles are absolutely fantastic because they have a little dropper in the top. And um, all I do is I just transfer, um, you know, I, I, I just very carefully, because you don't want to spill this, because this will stain your skin. Um, you know, you guys can probably see I've got a couple stains on my hands and stuff from getting this together last night for you. Um, and um, you're going to want to transfer this into a little bottle like this. And then for the app, ease of application with um, when you are doing your projects, um, it is just a lot easier if you transfer them into these little bottles or if you um, have a little uh, squirt bottle, maybe you have little squirt bottles at home um, or, you know, little spray bottles, um, you could do that too. Um, but just for just very inexpensive, um, you know, you can make a whole entire set of these alcohol inks. And there are such a variety of different things that you guys can make with these. Um, you know, next next week we're going to be doing a project, and we're going to be doing making a necklace, and we're going to be uh, decorating. Um, you know our our necklace with these alcohol inks so this is is pretty important and stuff you know that if you want to follow along with that project um that you maybe you know go ahead and and make um a set of these like i said two dollars and and 47 cents times two and then um, alcohol, you know, if you have that on hand, great. Um, if you don't end up, you know, if you would have to um, buy that, 
I'll order that whatever and stuff online um, it's a couple bucks and so for you know less than um, say eight dollars or ten dollars at least and stuff um, you can get an entire set of alcohol inks the set that I of markers that I bought that I purchased um, you know was a, a set of 12 markers and that um, you know so you get 12 different colors um, and those sets are r running um, when you buy alcohol inks commercially they they are usually about 40 or 50 dollars so you save quite a bit by making this and this is gonna last a long time and stuff this is gonna take me a long time to utilize a whole baby food jar of, of alcohol ink and stuff and this um, like I said you know this this color will develop this was the yellow that I put together last last night or yesterday um, you can see that's that's really dark and rich in color. Um, this purple will continue developing over the next 24 hours, and then after 24 hours, it will be ready to use. And then you can transfer it into any um, bottle for the ease of application, you know, that you would like. So, all right. So I'm gonna just take a paper towel quick and get that off my fingers and hopefully my fingers won't be staying purple for the next three years. <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to make um, our watercolor palette, okay? And so the supplies that you're going to need for this, again, are we're gonna need baking soda, white vinegar, um, light corn syrup, um, corn starch, food coloring, um, and a mini muffin tin or a, um, you know, an ice cube tray, and you'll also need um, teaspoons, okay? So, and then you'll, you know, you'll need a spoon, and I recommend a whisk, and then when we um, get to the point that we're going to um, start coloring our our um, you know colors in our ice cube tray because we're gonna put this all in an ice cube tray um, I recommend that you just if you have uh, popsicle sticks or toothpicks or you know use a little wooden a little wooden stick um, to do um, the uh, stirring and stuff of the colors in the individual little trays and stuff when we when we get to that point okay but first we have to mix it and so I'm going to mix my stuff right in this uh, in this little uh, measuring cup and I'm going to start mixing it with a whisk okay and so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take four tablespoons of baking soda so this is our tablespoon measure, and we're going to measure out four tablespoons of baking soda. And we want to be really exact with the measurements on this. This is a really finicky uh, recipe, and so we want to make sure and just be really exact, even out our tablespoons uh, when, our, when we're measuring here and stuff. You don't want any extra um, in there and stuff because it just it it throws off the the um, the combination of things and it, it just does not work very well so just be really exact with your measurements okay so this is four tablespoons of baking soda and we're going to add in two tablespoons of, of white vinegar okay And with the white vinegar, I'm going to want to add this pretty slowly because if you have ever done a science fair project um, making a volcano, you know that it bubbles up. <laughs> and to me, that is the most fun part of the whole entire process here of <laughs> making these. I, I absolutely love it when it bubbles up. So now I'm just gonna take my whisk in here. And I'm just going to whisk this around. Until everything is pretty well incorporated. And then I'm going to set my little whisk aside. 
Now we're going to take a half of a teaspoon of cornstarch. So let's see, do I have a half of a teaspoon? Oh, yep, I do. Cool. And again, I want to be really careful to get the correct measurement in here. I don't want any extra. And now we need to go back to our tablespoon measure and we're going to add in oh excuse me guys this was supposed to be <laughs> the the um, tablespoon I'm sorry so it is one half teaspoon of corn syrup and two tablespoons of corn starch so I'm sorry I got that a little bit mixed up so I'm just gonna add in not quite two because I added in that little fourth or one half teaspoon sorry about that I'll go over those measurements again when we get done okay so you guys have the correct measurement and when we add in the corn syrup that is so our paints are shiny that is what makes our paints shiny so if you and you can also use if you have glycerin you can also use glycerin So I'm going to go over those measurements again so you guys can get the correct measurements. We do four tablespoons of baking soda, two uh, tablespoons of white vinegar, one half teaspoon of corn uh, syrup, and two tablespoons of corn starch. And when you guys start mixing this after you have added your corn syrup and your corn starch, it is very, very thick. But you just have to keep stirring, and it is easier to or easiest to stir this with a wooden spoon. That is what I would recommend. Um, but you know, if you have a little metal spoon and stuff, you could do that too. Not, not a problem. But you just want to keep stirring until all of those little ingredients are, are um, fully incorporated. Okay, and the really nice thing about mixing it in a measuring cup is when we go to pour it in our ice cube tray it's very easy to go ahead and um, pour okay so, and I, I want to go ahead I don't want to fill this completely up I only want to fill it about halfway but you will be surprised these are going to last a really really long time And this is a recipe, by the way, guys, that you do not want to double. You do not want to double this recipe. You want to mix all of these separately, okay? So again, we're going to start with our um, mixing up another little batch. And I'm just going to mix up one more batch, and then I'm going to show you how to do the colorations. But we're going to start out with four tablespoons of baking soda. Two tablespoons of white vinegar and I remember when I started baking and when I moved away from home and and was was baking on my own you know not not with my mom I remember I called her one time and I I had made something that was you know something that we had made as kids growing up and I'd made it actually quite a few times and but it just didn't turn out at all and mom said well what did what did you what did you do you know and I said well I, I made a double batch because you know some of my friends were coming over 
And she goes, well, that is a recipe that you cannot double. <laughs> she said, if you want more of it, she said, you have to mix up two different batches. And I said, oh my goodness, that is exactly what I did and stuff. So there are just some recipes that you cannot double. So this is one of them. I would recommend, you know, mixing up two um, or more, um, you know, uh, of these recipes separately instead of um, doing it all together and stuff because it just turns out better. So, okay. And so in here, you know, I now I'm going to add in my corn uh, syrup, my light corn syrup, one half of a teaspoon, and that is in order to give my paint my paints shininess. And then the last ingredient is two tablespoons. of cornstarch. And like I said, this is pretty hard to, when you start stirring, you might think, oh my goodness, this is never gonna come together, but you just have to keep working it and it, it just does, it just, I don't know, it's the chemical reaction between all of the different ingredients and it just comes together, but you have to kind of even like, I don't know, almost chop it <laughs> with your spoon, mash it with your spoon to get it to go together. And then all of a sudden it just turns back into a liquid. So it's really cool. Sometimes it takes just a little bit. Just be patient with it though and keep keep going. And if you guys make this at home, you'll see what I mean. It is just Okay, and now it's finally turning into a liquid where I can pour it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this, this uh, portion into my ice cube tray and then I'll show you guys how to mix the colors. Okay, perfect. So I'm not gonna mix all of the colors in this, um, in this, but I'm just I want to just mix a couple of them so I can show you guys how to how to do that. I got a, this one a little this side a little bit full, so I'm gonna flip this over a little bit. That's okay. I want to make them all kind of even. Okay, awesome, perfect. Okay, so now what I found is if you have just regular food coloring, um, you can use that. But I really like this, this gel food coloring, um, and that is really super simple to use. And so if you have access to that, or maybe you have, you know, maybe you have that at home and stuff, if mom 
um, or grandma does a lot of baking or, or cake decorating or anything and stuff, maybe you've got, maybe you guys have that at home. So um, you utilize what you have though. Um, don't go out and buy something special. You know, I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and buy anything. Um, but if you've got the gel food coloring at home, <clears throat> that is a really um, easy way to do this project. And what I do is I just add a little bit in here and it does not take much okay it just really is um, doesn't take a lot and then I use my toothpick and I'm just gonna start stirring this and I'm going to see if I like that color and if I like that color great I'm going to leave it that color but if I want to change it I can either add a little bit more or a little bit um, you know just just whatever so Okay, so that is our first color, and now I'm going to set this aside, and then let's make, because my favorite color is purple, we're going to make purple. And so you just squeeze a little bit in, then take your, can you guys see this okay? I hope you can. But with you know the the regular liquid uh, food coloring, you would just drop a couple drops in and see if you like that color and go with that. All right, so that is our pretty pink and purple. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Now let's do orange. Want to use separate uh, toothpicks or else you're going to get color transfers or separate popsicle sticks. I just wipe them off in between. And the thing I like about this is I really like the vibrancy of the colors that we get here and stuff. They're very vibrant colors and um, it's just a really, I mean, this is so simple and easy. I think everybody should, should uh, you know, make their own watercolor palette. And not to mention it's very inexpensive. It's an inexpensive thing to do. When you're mixing your colors, you want to make sure and mix until there's absolutely no white left at all. Okay. Let's... Okay, now this is... A liquid so I'm just gonna add a couple of drops in there I added three drops and we're gonna see oh wow and the color is really really dark that's great that's exactly what I wanted I like dark dark blue so what you're going to do after you guys are done mixing all of your colors is you're going to let this sit and cure for 24 to 48 hours. And depending on the humidity in your home, um, the paints will be dry after 24 to 48 hours and then they are ready to use, okay? And you use this just like you would a regular um, watercolor palette. You know, you we, we dip our brushes in, um, and just, um, you know, get them wet with a little bit of water and then um, go ahead and, and put it on the paint, get paint on our brush and then paint with that. So it's just a really, um, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm doing this because I had that mom that messaged me that said that, you know, they really wanted to do the, the, um, uh, the lessons that I was doing for watercolor, um, but unfortunately they didn't have a watercolor palette at home. Um, and so I'm showing you today how to make your own 
watercolor palette so everyone can follow along um, you know with with me when I when I'm doing watercolor oh and the red is absolutely just gorgeous guys I will hold it up here in just a just a second So this is the final color that I'm going to be mixing along with you guys and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this palette out um, you know after after the video is stopped I'll I'll post a picture of it um, in the description when I'm done and again if you're watching me on Facebook I'm Myra Klein on Facebook and I do all of the art with Miss Myra uh, classes at 11 a.m. Mountain Time Monday through Friday um, and that is a public um, um, way of, of watching it or you can catch me over on YouTube um, and I am Art with Miss Myra on YouTube um, and if you join me on YouTube I would appreciate it if you would subscribe um, and hit the bell notifications so you can get notifications of all the new videos when they are uploaded so um, that is the two ways that you can watch all of the Art with Miss Myra um, uh, shows and I will be doing this until May 29th when we are going to be doing a virtual um, art show and so if you have followed along with me and done any projects I'd appreciate it if you would send me pictures of the completed art projects and I will be posting them and they will be featured in the virtual art show on May 29th so this is what I have so far guys and you can see that um, all of my colors are very very rich very very bright um, and this is a watercolor um, palette that is really going to last you a long time so when we get done um, off the video today I'll go ahead and fill the rest of my uh, my um, compartments here and stuff and get them colored up and then I will go ahead and post a picture so you guys can take a, a look at my finished uh, watercolor palette R just a reminder you have to let this uh, dry and cure for 24 to 48 hours before you um, utilize uh, the paint um, in here and after that you can utilize them um, uh, in just the same form that you do any other watercolor palette uh, you know purchased or not so but thanks so much for joining me today guys um, and I hope that you enjoyed learning how to do all of the um, how to uh, things that I taught you how to do today um, please join me tomorrow on Wednesday and we're going to be making a cherry tree painting um, and so for that project you're going to need white paper um, you know uh, our, our construction paper printer paper uh, watercolor paper sketchbook paper whatever kind of white paper that you have you're going to need acrylic paint um, pink white and black and you're going to need an empty 20 ounce pop bottle so those are the things that you're going to be needing for tomorrow as always thank you so much for joining me I sure appreciate it and love all the comments and everything keep the pictures coming in kids um, so you can be part of the virtual art show on May 29th and until tomorrow we'll see, uh, I hope that you have a great day and we'll see you later bye bye